Today we're talking Chan Gailey's offense. Going to break it down, talk about who's going to succeed in this offense. Let's get into this. What is up, Finn fans? Yes, like if you can tell, today we are going to be talking about Chan Gailey's offense. I'm going to be breaking down personnel, what he likes to run, all this stuff. Who's going to you know, be successful in it? going to talk about the run game a little bit because a lot of people like to think Chan Gailey's offense, you don't be successful as a running back. going to talk about breakdown stats and all that stuff. Being that I am recording this on a Sunday night, one of you guys asked me, and to the new subscribers, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see throughout this video. Give it a thumbs up. But um, one of you guys asked me, hey, what happened to the calendar, Doug? I'm bringing it back. I'm recording this on a Sunday. You guys are seeing it on a Monday. And on Sundays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we get trivia. If you don't know, like I said, if you're new, Roadrunner gave me this awesome calendar. Certain days, it's just stats. Certain days, it's trivia. Weekends, trivia. Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday, stats. So, being that it's Sunday, me recording this, let's give you some trivia. Long snapper John Denny's start string of 208 consecutive games played. At the close of the 2017 season, easily outdistanced what player for the next longest such streak in Dolphin history? Very worded, but in a nutshell, who was who is second to John Denny with the most consecutive games played? So who's below John Denny? John Denny, 208 consecutive games. Who is the second Miami Dolphin to have the most consecutive games played? I will tell you guys the answer right before comment of the day. So let's jump into this. Let's jump into Chan Gailey's offense. Got all my stats here. Did a lot of homework. Broke it down. In a nutshell, Chan Gailey loved himself some wide receivers. Absolutely loves himself as wide, some stuff. Once. Once he likes to run a lot of 11, 10, 0, uh, 0, 1, and 0, 0 personnel or 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. I sound like a robot. And essentially, you might be saying to yourself, Doug, what the f is a what are those personnel? Well, a 1, 1 is running back tight end. So if you're looking at 11 or a 1, 1 personnel, that means one running back, one tight end. If you're looking at a 1, 0, oh, that means no tight end, just a running back. If you're looking at an 0, oh, 1, that's just a tight end. No running back, and if I might have said that backwards. And then if it's a 0, zero that means you got neither. So if you can tell, the man likes to run a lot of one sets, not a lot of fullbacks, which means ton of three wide receiver sets. That's kind of his base. That's kind of Chan Gailey's base with his offense is a lot of three wide receiver sets. You know, He also likes to use very athletic players non necessarily starter quarterbacks or non quarterbacks but athletic players in the quarterback position who did the Miami Dolphins draft with their 7th round pick I'll talk about that because I will get into people that will succeed in this offense but he does like to uh, examples are Cordell Stewart and Bert uh, Emmanuel he really he, he liked to use those guys especially Cordell Stewart when he was the offensive coordinator for the Steelers Gailey, with 2000 and 2001 with the Finns, ran a lot of three wide receiver sets, and he was the first one to kind of implement. And he also used a very different style of the run-pass option. You see, you see what I'm picking up what I'm putting down here? When it comes to the run game, he really likes to run by the philosophy, pass to score, run to win. So when they're up, you just run that ball, eat that clock up, make the defense tired, run them down. It's it's not that, you know, run first, run opens up the pass style thing, you know, play action stuff. His offense is a little bit different. He's going to try to score on you with his passing, and he's going to run the ball to win the game, a.k.a. eat that clock up. Now, when it comes to tight ends, we all want to know tight ends. Uh, like I said, all, wide receivers, It's this is a wide receiver happy offense. Um, but when it comes to tight ends, Right, he's had a bad stint of tight ends. When he was with the Bills and the Jets, there. If you look at the tight end stats when it came to receptions, when it came to yards and touchdowns, it was doo doo, hot stinking doo doo. Was that because of his offense, or was that because the tight ends were just a doo doo? I'm gonna lean more towards the tight ends were doo doo, or the ball just went to better players. Like I said, tight ends were probably doo doo. But when he was with the Kansas City Chiefs in 2008. Tony Gonzalez, Tony Gonzalez, 
96 catches, 1,058 yards, and 10 touchdowns. In 2001, he did like to use a lot of two. He didn't use it a lot, but he did use two tight end sets in 2001. He very much likes to use the tight end in the slot, motion them into the backfield, and even sometimes he likes to take the tight end and put them outside. We saw what uh, Gizicki did to the Jets last year when he was outside going one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of times when you take a big tight end and you put him on the outside on the barrier, the corner looks like... Aren't you supposed to cover him like to the linebacker? And sometimes the linebacker goes over there. And then, like I said, you get you get just completely owned. Now, that's, you know, we talk tight end. Again, wide receivers. Wide receivers really love to, to you know, this offense. If you look at uh, the quarterback situation, I will talk about that when I come to succeed. Um, because, obviously, it's a pass-heavy offense. It's a very spread, you know, go offense. Quarterbacks are going to love it. Running backs, you're thinking to yourself, Doug, running backs are probably going to hate it. Not necessarily. Uh, certain running backs will thrive in this offense. Certain running backs. A lot of running backs that can catch out of the backfield will thrive. But then you're also thinking to yourself, well, Doug, what then are we going to run a lot? Well, I, be, I went back, right, and I looked at his stats as an offensive coordinator and when he was running the offense throughout his career to look at the running backs, right? He loves to run a lot of two-headed running back sets. And a lot of you guys are asking me, is Brita or Howard going, who's the starter? They're both the starter. Or maybe even, you know, you throw somebody else in there. Three, so, you know, likes to intermingle them. Two different types of backs, Brita and uh, Howard. Brita is more scat back and uh, Howard is a more bullish back, you know. But you look at teams, right? With the Miami Dolphins in uh, 2000, Lamar Smith had 1,139 yards for 14 touchdowns. The next year, 2001, 968 for five touchdowns. Not too great, but he's still pretty decent running back, right? Then when you look at his next team, he was with the Kansas City Chiefs in 2008. Larry Johnson, 874 yards, five touchdowns, not too great. Then we go to the Buffalo Bills. Fred Jackson in 2010, 927 yards, five touchdowns. And in 2011, 934, six touchdowns. And then C.J. Spiller in 2012, uh, 1,244 yards, six touchdowns. Then he goes to the Jets, offensive coordinator, Chris Ivory, 10,070, uh, 1,070 yards, 10,000. No, no, no. Seven touchdowns, and then the following year, the last time he coached uh, was uh, Matt Forte, 813 yards, three touchdowns. Now, when you look at the rushing attack for Chan Gailey's offense, it's kind of just middle of the pack, right? I, I raffled off a lot of numbers, but... I didn't. I, those were the leading rushers on the team. None of them were 200, and none of them were quarterbacks. I'm pretty sure we'd be happy with any of those. But when you look at the team as a whole and you look at where these offenses ranked, right? 2000 Dolphins ranked 14, the 2001 Dolphins ranked 23rd. Not too great, but 14, again, middle of the pack. You're going to see a lot of middle of the pack stuff here. Kansas City Chiefs in 2008, 16, middle of the pack. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, 2010, 18, 18th ranked, 2011, 13th ranked, 2012, 6th ranked rushing offense. And the Jets in 2015, 2016, 10th ranked and uh, 12th ranked. Very middle of the pack. Again, he loves his wide receivers. He loves to spread the offense out. His base is a three wide receiver, one running back, one tight end set. That's his base. But to say that the running backs aren't going to do anything in this offense, not necessarily true. Will they be the stars? Will they be a run heavy, you know, eye formation, strong set, single back for me? Probably not. You're not probably going to see full back in there a lot. We'll see what happens with Chandler Cox. But they will thrive and they will succeed, especially if they can catch out of the backfield because he does like to use them a lot in that situation. So looking at the team in a whole, Looking at Chan Gailey's offense throughout the years, like I said, loves to, his three wide receiver sets. He does love to move his tight end around. Tony Gonzalez had a very good year with him in 2008. Um, you know, he does use his running backs, middle of the pack when it comes to that. Who's going to succeed with the Miami Dolphins? Now, obviously, Ryan Fitzpatrick, if he could stay healthy and if his arm doesn't die on him. And again, the fact that the man said that he limits his throws in the offseason worries the hell out of me. 
I feel like he'll succeed. He's been with this offense for about five years. He knows this offense. He's going to succeed. But that doesn't say that the other quarterbacks won't succeed. Tua, I honestly think, will succeed because Chan Gailey likes to run a lot of horizontal uh, offense, throwing outside the numbers. And Tua is very good at that. Tua has a great accuracy and great ball placement. Josh Rosen will succeed because it's not the offense that was installed with Chad O'Shea. It's a very good quarterback focused offense. And I honestly think Chan Gailey can help Josh Rosen direct towards a very successful career. So all three of these quarterbacks can succeed in this offense, but mostly Fitz because Fitz has been doing it for five years. You look at other people, Gazicki. I think Gazicki is going to succeed in this offense, especially because they like to move him around. Yes, my knock and everyone's knock on him for years has been he's not a great uh, run blocker. Well, Chan Gailey's offense, you don't necessarily need to be a great run blocker as long as you can catch, get out there, and do your thing like a chicken wing, which we know Gazicki can do. So expect to see him being moved around the field a lot. Wide receivers. The wide receivers are going to thrive in this offense. A lot of people said, well, you know, look at all the wide receivers have. Jakeem Grant, Albert Wilson, Preston Williams, Devontae Parker, Alan Hearns. We bring back Isaiah Ford, Kirk Merritt, Cole. We got a ton of wide receivers. Why do we have so many wide receivers? It's because we like to, this offense is going to run a ton of wide receiver stats. We need that depth. I've talked about it in the live stream. The Dolphins, they always struggled and they always fell on their face because of the depth. They need that depth. They got the depth. Hopefully it pans out, but the wide receivers are going to kill it. Matt Breida. I think Matt Breida will do very successful in this offense. Not saying that Jordan Howard won't, not saying he will over him, but the fact that Matt Breida is that speedy type of wide receiver, I think he will do very well in this offense. I expect when training camp comes for them to motion him out a lot and have him potentially line up as a slot, maybe in a wide receiver spot. I expect him to do very good things. Again, like I'm saying, not saying Jordan Howard won't, but I think Matt Breida will. And the last guy I think will succeed in this offense. And, you know, he might be an oversight because of where he was drafted. Malcolm Perry. Like I said before, Chan Gilly likes to take the non-conformed quarterback and put them in the quarterback situation, a.k.a. Cordell Stewart. Look for Malcolm Perry to do that. Look for Malcolm Perry to be all over the field. One of you guys asked me, hey, where do you see Malcolm Perry being? Give me a, give me a, a position that, you're gonna, that he's going to be in. And it's like, he's going to be everywhere. He's honestly going to be everywhere. But I honestly, if you put a, a gun to my head, I'd probably say uh, wide receiver. But I expect Malcolm Perry to do very, very well in this offense. Very, very well. Um, but yeah, that is who I think would succeed. Now, when it, when when you want to say like, hey, who won't do well in this offense? You know, I, I don't look at it that way. I honestly think that certain players will might take a little bit longer to understand this offense. But I think this offense, and Ryan Fitzpatrick said this, that the offense isn't hard to understand, but it's hard to defend. And we've seen that. And we we can see it, especially with the style and the players that we have. So that is who I have uh, succeeding. If you Comment below. Let me know what you guys think of Chan Gailey's offense. If I missed a certain aspect of Chan Gailey's offense that you want to talk about, comment it below. Let me hear about it. Who do you think will succeed in Chan Gailey's offense? Who do you think won't succeed? Like I said, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't really think of anyone that won't succeed because I think all these wide receivers will succeed, especially with the speed and everything that they have. Uh, running backs, uh, I don't know. Chandler Cox might be the odd man out here. I don't know how many fullback sets they're going to run, so maybe if I had to put a guy that won't succeed, it'd probably be Chandler Cox. But be sure to comment below. Let me know who you think is going to succeed in this offense and if I, what you think of the offense and if I missed anything you want to talk about. Before we get to the comment of the day, let me give you the answer to the trivia question. Who was the second player with the most consecutive games played behind John Denny's 208? That is, drum roll please, there's no drum roll because I'm here by myself, Jason Taylor. So John Denny played 208 consecutive games. Jason Taylor played 103. 103 and he's second. It's 105 consecutive game difference. Man was a beast. Let's get to your guys' comment of the day. This comment comes from Geo's NFL News, and he says, Comment of the day. 
who will have the breakout season for the Miami Dolphins this year? I love your videos. And I'm a Steelers fan. Well, welcome. I hope you, you hope you're subscribed. Thank you for uh, commenting. Thank you for watching, even though you're a Steelers fan. Who do I think the Miami Dolphins will have, who's going to have a breakout season this year? There's players that I hope will have breakout seasons. You know, Xavier Howard had a great season before he got injured with those seven interceptions. He just needs to stay healthy, stay on the field. I've talked about Xavier Howard. I'm going to do a video about breakout players and people who need to do this, this, and that. But just to answer your question and stop, you know, beating around the bush, I honestly think Mike Gazicki. I think Mike Gazicki is going to have a breakout year. I think this is the offense that's made for him. I think this is the offense that is going to show his athleticism and show his skill type and put him in the spot to succeed. So I think it's going to be Mike Gazicki having him be out in the slot, having him be out in the boundary, moving him around. I'm picking Mike Gazicki. But that is the video today. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Be sure to go follow me on Twitter. Uh, I've been tweeting out a ton of things, news, news breaks, all that stuff. It's been quite quiet right now. So I've been tweeting out other things, just chat with you guys on Twitter. So be sure to go over there. Also, check me out on Instagram. Check out the Bit Boys. We just put out the new podcast. Just go check it out. Uh, one of you guys checked it out already. Daniel said you loved it. So be sure to go over and check it out. If you like what you, you hear, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to put out new gameplay and all that stuff next week. So be sure to check that out. Also, check out my second channel, uh, Dougly Do Wrong Studios. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. You guys got me over 100, so it's just youtube.com slash Studios. Be sure to check out dolphinstalk.com. I'm going to have uh, the creator of that website on the channel this week to talk about it and talk about dolphins, so be sure to check that stuff out. I already said give it a subscribe and give it a thumbs up in the beginning of the video, so I'm not going to say it again. But if you want to, be sure. If you liked what you heard, you liked what you saw, be sure to do it. Other than that, I think I'm going to go live Wednesday surprise live event either tomorrow or wednesday i'll let you guys know but i'm leaning towards wednesday uh but other than that i will see you guys in the next video but like usual stay classy fins up